recording is now in progress. I can no. see. And I, I kicked Ed off. <laughs> what happened to Ed? That's not good. All right, can you guys, can you see the, the presentation there? Is that what's showing up on your screens? I can see it. All right. Well, now without Ed, Tom, or Jeff, now, now we are at uh, less than 50% for, for quorum. So, so we're, as of right now, we're, we're recording. Rick is here, the important people, right, Rick? Good to see you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Rick, we were we were just discussing this this matter. You know, the, the primary purpose behind this live meeting was to provide provide transparency to the membership about what it is we're working on and, and how we're going about it. Um, I would feel a lot better if uh, you know, like Jeff and Tom and Ed <laughs> were here. Uh, I don't know what happened to Ed. Apparently, he's having some technical difficulties. Um, I have a hard stop at 6.30 uh, p.m. because I leave tomorrow morning early uh, to head to Texas for my uh, surgery. So I'm going to suggest that we give another few minutes. We'll see what happens. If Ed comes back on, we'll, we're going to plow through. If Ed does not come back on, I'm going to say maybe we... Uh, we postpone. Oh, there's Ed. Let's give him a minute. What kind of hell was that I was just in? There you go. Holy crap. I got I got bumped and then I had to just hang with the electrons for a while. It it had <laughs> nothing to do with me, I swear. All right, as I mentioned, we are. Now, uh, in the midst of our live uh, executive committee meeting for the subcommittee, we have one attendee who uh, decided to postpone uh, the important things in his life and come listen to us talk about remote controlled submarines and our vision for the future. So we are going to plow forward. Uh, I am recording this. Um, Jeff and, uh, and Tom are absent. They've got prior commitments, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to do the best we can in their absence. So uh, again, assuming that everybody can see the, uh, the presentation that I have um, shared. All right. The idea behind this, just really quickly uh, for the one attendee, um, don't worry about this because you're here. If you have something to say, just say it. Um, we're more worried if there are like 30 people all trying to say stuff at the same time. But for those of you chiming in, um, or, or looking at this video after the fact, you can at any time uh, email any of us at uh, these email addresses. And actually, I have to um, apologize. I did not put editor at subcommittee.com uh, or membership at subcommittee.com on this list, uh, both of which are valid email addresses, and both individuals would be more than happy to uh, take your inquiries, uh, questions, and uh, do the best I can to field your inquiries. So moving on, um, we are now well past our uh, agenda, so I'm not even going to worry about this. We're just going to plow through <laughs> the best we can, best laid plans of, of mice and submariners and all that fun stuff. Um, I want to talk about um, a new addition or two new additions uh, over the last meeting that we had. I want to spend a little bit of time about role clarity, who we are and, and what each of us is responsible for, um, what the sort of things that we are hoping to bring to the membership to justify that massive $10 a year expenditure that uh, members are currently paying. Um, talk about the kinds of things that we've been working on, primarily the web assets, as we mentioned before, those are one of our primary concerns, um, making those much more robust and uh, bringing them up to date from a safety and functionality perspective. Uh, and then Ed is going to uh, regale us with tales of his uh, massive strides forward with 
uh, communicating with the various sub rods. We'll touch briefly on uh, events for 2021 and uh, some opportunities that we have to network with uh, some other people. And if we have any time left, we'll open it up for questions from the, uh, the, 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 the one actively involved individual on the call with us. So moving forward, this vision is your subcommittee executive team. Uh, previously, it was like three people. Um, over the course of the last couple of months, we've actually had visibility to the fact that the executive committee is actually uh, consists of an additional two people. The, the elected positions are the ones that you guys are all familiar with. That's the president, vice president, and treasurer position. There are two uh, nominated positions, that being of editor and the membership chair. And uh, all of you guys are obviously familiar with the subcommittee report. Jeff uh, Porteous does an amazing job on that publication. And uh, his uh, sole responsibility is making that as epic as possible. Um, but the, uh, one of the big things that we wanted to do was uh, open up a couple of minutes for Matt, our new membership chair, to, uh, to be introduced to the group. Um, Matt is an individual that we identified uh, through the Nautilus Dry Docks Dive Tribe as, uh, as being somebody who is passionate about this hobby and, and who possibly possesses a skill set that would be beneficial to our group. We, uh, we by we, I mean Ed, um, primarily uh, suggested opening up an invitation to him and, and Matt jumped on uh, primarily, I think, because the, the compensation, you know, piece was, was huge. He couldn't pass that up. Uh, so I'm going to turn this over to Matt for just a couple of minutes. Matt, give me like a, uh, a 10,000 foot level about who you are, um, your experience with submarines, um, like what you do for a living and, and why it is you actually said yes to Ed's request. Sure, I'll take it. Uh, so Matthew Holmeyer, uh, I am a uh, graduate of the United States Marine Academy. So I've uh, been to sea on both cargo ships and as for a lifetime job. I am actually a active duty submariner for the United States Navy, a uh, lieutenant in the U.S. Navy. So I've done a three-year tour on a submarine, particularly the USS Key West out of Guam. So I'm all about talking about the Guam tenacious tip of the spear and what we do out there. Uh, really enjoyed that experience. I'm all about submarines, including 688s, but uh, as long as it submerges and surfaces, I'm all about talking about it. Uh, and uh, very humbled with the opportunity to take up this membership chair position and looking forward to figuring out one, what it's supposed to do. And then two, uh, how are we going to make that uh, propel us into the future of the organization? Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. And, and I, for one, am, am pretty uh, impressed with how you kind of latched on to this position and, and uh, want to be making it your own. I think Ed made a great call in singling you out from, uh, you know, the, the group of individuals uh, in our in our little um, community over there. So I just want to say, you know, on behalf of myself and, and the rest of the executive and probably the entire subcommittee uh, organization as a whole, thank you so much for stepping up. I'm super excited to see what we can do uh, in the future with you helming those uh, initiatives. That's awesome. All right, thanks. Ed, you got anything to uh, to add to that? This was all your idea. Hey, it's uh, it just felt right, man. The, the second I realized that you thought, and as you spoke, you know, uh, the decision behind uh, Matt just seemed like the guy. Yeah. You know, he just. Uh, I'm the first to admit I, I like to follow the scientific method and doing things and take real careful thought, but I also believe in going with the gut. And my gut said that. Well put, sir. Well put. All right, jumping back. I got to find my screen here now. I've lost it. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, here we go. Back to it. 
Um, all right, position views. I have stolen this uh, shamelessly from the uh, uh, subcommittee articles of incorporation. One thing that I wanted to do, <clears throat> because um, quite uh, unexpectedly, I, I suppose you could say, the, the positions are outlined, but not really what people, like what those, those positions are actually responsible for. So what you see in front of you, this, this massive Bible, is the entirety of the description of each one of the respective positions uh, of each one of the executive committee uh, members. And so I just want to take a couple of minutes, uh, take some input from the members of the EC who are online right now. And uh, since there are uh, two subcommittee members, um, take their input as well. Um, article 3.1, President of the Subcommittee. I am uh, the chairperson and uh, I am the executive for the administration of the subcommittee. That, that sounds exceptionally broad uh, to me. Um, my, my vision for this is, uh, you know, coming from a corporate world, is to, uh, to the best of my ability, to um, act in the role of, uh, of being uh, a, a, a leader, a corporate leader in this environment. Um, and the role of a leader is not necessarily to uh, enact, it's not necessarily to do, but it's to empower. So the, uh, my, my vision for this is to find the right people, give them the tools that they need to succeed uh, and, uh, and drive the vision. You know, what, what is the vision for the subcommittee and how are we as a collective group going to uh, you know, all move together towards that one unified goal. Um, I, I, I would argue that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that, um, not only because it's um, abstract and, and means that it can be whatever I want it to be, um, but I think it's, it's suitably general enough to, to describe, I think, the role of the, of the president to, to, to help uh, create the vision and um, collect the resources necessarily for the, uh, the, the people doing things to succeed. Um, any comments from any uh, people in the, in the stands here about that particular role? Any additions, subtractions, or uh, substitutions? Suitably simple, and you're there to facilitate and implement any suggestions. I, I, I would argue not implement. But but I I'll, I will um, I will be there to to facilitate to the best of my ability. Yeah, my, I, I need to to help other people succeed at, at their respective duties. Yeah, absolutely, Rick. All sounds good. Yay! <laughs> All right, Vice President. Whoa! Oh man! Oh my gosh! Vice President. Yeah. And as you saw, it's uh, basically um, uh, also the secretary of the subcommittee. And it's my responsibility to maintain records of the subcommittee. And um, I'm going to take that uh, very, very seriously, including James. And what I mean by that is um, Tom taking over this these positions, we're, we're kind of trying to flesh out and uh, recover um, items that were lost. Some simple things like um, passwords and um, the ability just to, to run it, you know, just, just things that, you know, not to say anything about the past is passed gone and we can't go to management, but we're almost having to construct and um, you know that will not happen in the future. In the future, we will uh, not only have complete records, electronic records, okay, because I just don't, I can't write fast enough to keep up. So that's why these meetings are recorded. So any member at any time, hopefully, 
uh, we'll have a lot more people once we get the email system up and running. And we don't have to depend on people go look for a meeting invite at the president's corner on a long form somewhere. But you can blast a uh, port slash traffic alert. And it, these records will be kept. And to you, because it, it's not about your executive committee or, or the people at the top of the chain. It's a human virtue to have that Bob said. We support you. This pyramid is inverted. And we're here to support you. It is your fault. And, you know, we all share that vision. Um, we have the opportunity to bring the subcommittee to the next level. And we're going to do our best to do that. So I got to say. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> on, on, on that note, I'm going to, I'm going to say that, you know, there, there's, there is so much to, there is so much to do. And, and I would say Ed, uh, probably more so than anybody else as of yet, and maybe Matt will surpass this because he's only been on the, the job for like a day. But um, if anything needs to get done, Ed's the first one to step up and say, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, we're a small organization, um, you know, like any small organization, the, the leadership has to wear a lot of hats. And uh, I, I think Ed is, is really stepped up to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that responsibility on and I'm going to make it happen. And he's, he's, he's not only said he's going to do it, but he's actually executed, which is in today's day and age is pretty rare. So good on you, Ed. I, I for one, very much appreciate the work that you've done thus far. I'm super excited to see what we're going to be doing here in the future. I am going to fast forward a little bit here. Um, we got two other positions, uh, the treasurer and the editor. The treasurer, basically, he's the money guy, right? Uh, and that's uh, that's Tom's position, Tom Shalfin. And uh, he's doing a great job of, of step uh, stepping up and, and managing that. That role is, is fairly cut and dried. I don't want to spend too much time talking about that. Um, on the similar vein, the editor of the subcommittee talking about the production of the, uh, the SCR, the subcommittee report, uh, Jeff Porteous, who has obviously stepped up and is doing a tremendous job in that role as well. I don't think we need to spend too much time on that, but I will pause for one second. Does anybody have any comments about those two positions? Are there any additions, subtractions? Uh, or additional comments that need to be placed on those two positions before we get to the important one. Not that I could hear the audio for Ed wasn't that clear. But uh, I'll take it on his word. All right. It, it, He's got a face you can trust. He does. He does. Used car salesman for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to stop and take uh, and give Matt an opportunity to chime in because, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to this again. I'm gonna share out the screen. Membership chairman of the subcommittee, an appointed position. He was responsible for the handling of matters dealing with membership. Wow, that is a very broad, you know, definition. So Matt, like take, is Matt okay? Or, or you prefer Matthew? Uh, either is fine. Okay. I, some people are weird about that. I just want to make sure I'm cool. Um, hey, sailor. <laughs> yeah, that works. So what what is your vision? And I know you're like literally 48 hours into this this position, but what what are you what's your vision for this? Because honestly, the only thing that you're being held to right now is responsible for the handling of matters dealing with membership. So it is very much your opportunity to dictate what that actually entails. So I think a lot of what that position probably was supposed to do is now governed by software. Cause I think back in the day when subcommittee was, you know, back and forth pen and ink discussions between people in the nineties, mid late nineties, and then, like just paper management of records of who is like paid their dues, who is a member. Uh, but now the software kind of controls that between like PayPal is controlling your funding of like paying for your dues. And then the form itself serves as like your registration point to get access to the forms and the material. So I think a lot of those responsibilities as vague as the statement is are now covered by software. I think 
maybe a good place to go, at least initially as I assess the lay of the land. It's where you're not like, where's the membership at? And what, what does the membership like to use? I mean, so I've spent like the last several hours just digging through like, you know, what are the stats for the forum? You know, how many members are there? Like we have uh, 773, that's 1773 one, members. Uh, about 100 of them are listed as active as to what that means. I think that's a good question for the, how the software is made. Probably a time since last post type thing. Uh, we, you know, we have YouTube as well. And I think it's important too, it's like for ma matters of the membership is like ensuring the membership is aware of like what's all available. Like, you know, I'm not sure how many people know we have an Instagram. I learned about the Instagram two weeks ago, just randomly searching for it. Uh, I'm not sure how many people know about the local chapters. Uh, I only started learning about the local chapters because of a video report that Ed's been putting on the YouTube channel. So I think kind of taking a look at our different social media medium since I think a big problem that the subcommittee is looking at is how do we expand membership? How do we reach either younger people or how do we pe reach people who are 40 or above looking for something to do for a hobby with their retirement money, right? You know, looking for something to do, but they don't know how to get to it, right? So I think figuring out where the membership is at, what does the membership know about? What does the membership not know about? spreading that word so that uh, all the resources that are available are actually known to be available. That, that sounds totally valid to me. I, I would, I would, <clears throat> you know, I, I would say there, there should almost be a, you know, a guiding mission statement, you know, for each one of these positions. So, you know, if, if I had to throw one out there for the membership chairman, I would say my, then, and this is my opinion open for discussion, obviously, is, is that the membership chairman is, is basically responsible for the innovation of attracting and retaining new members for the organization. If we want to, if we want to make things simple, you know, and straightforward, it's, it's, you know, who's a member, who do we want to be member and, and how do we get more of them? That, that's kind of like the, the, the questions that we want to have uh, answered. And, and that's, that's honestly, that's a big ask it's a it's a fundamental like earth shaking uh you know question that not only our organization but many other organizations and businesses around the world are, are struggling with right now so um you know while you may be the face of that particular aspect of the of the subcommittee i would say you're obviously backed up by all of the other members uh, of the executive team and and key members of the subcommittee you know membership as well so does that make sense? Does, does that seem to align maybe with uh, with your vision as well? Yes, I think so. I agree. Awesome. awesome. All right. Comments from the peanut gallery. Anything? How about, uh, are there still actually paper boat model magazines that you can advertise a little subcommittee? Come join us if you want to know. Yeah. That is a real. That is a really <laughs> good question. I I'm gonna I'm gonna hazard a guess that the the days of, of paper publications are are probably uh, over with. I I I can't think. I shouldn't say that. I mean, uh, you know, like with, with my flight stuff, you know, I'm, I I just recently became a pilot, and so I, I actually do get magazines from like the Piper, you know, a, uh, AOPA and and that kind of thing. So. They exist, but but I have a hard time thinking through, you know, in our little niche of the of the world, um, you know, publications that that do that. But having said that, you know, be it digital or or physical, there's opportunity to have a a, a place there to to you know to step out and and put ourselves out in them. So I think that's that's obviously another thing that we can obviously you know do is is. Um, try and network with all of these other organizations. And, and we've had conversations in the background about these organizations and which ones, uh, you know, we can potentially reach out to partner up with and, uh, and um, you know, leverage to grow the, the subcommittee. Yeah. Yeah. I think if, uh, if Jeff was here, he would answer to you, Rick. Um, so he also contributes to the American Submariner, which is a quarterly magazine from the United States Submarine Veterans. Uh, 
Association, and he's going to write. He actually has an article submitted for the next quarter. So there are there are some ah, it doesn't show up very well. There are some paper copies of things still out there. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple examples, but that's the only specific one I do know of. Yeah. So, so, so question, so I don't sound like an idiot. Is it Submariner or is it Submariner? Does anybody know the what answer? It depends on the Navy. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the Navy. It depends on the Navy? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, Submariner sounds good to me. Sounds All right. Like the UK. <laughs> All right. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense why you do that. That, that sounds good. So I'm, I'm going to go back to sharing here. We're going to jump back to the presentation. So what we'll do, um, I would say, uh, on behalf of the executive uh, committee, I think what would probably be a great idea is for us to revisit the articles of incorporation and provide some more definition to those roles. I think it would probably be a really good idea, not only for the existing executive committee to understand what they need to be doing, but for incoming executive committee members to understand what they should be doing. So uh, I, I think it'll be good for us. We'll, we'll revisit that, perhaps expound upon those paragraphs uh, a little bit more and provide some definition about uh, what those uh, individuals should be focusing their time, energy, and efforts upon. Um, all right, membership vision. Now this Everybody's now leaning forward, I'm sure. They're like, oh, what's going on here? So subcommittee membership as it stands right now is a massive, earth-shattering $10 per year. Um, and that basically gives you, uh, you know, I, I would say realistically, uh, you know, SCR access, uh, the subcommittee report access, which is world-class and absolutely worth every nickel of $10 per year. What we are trying to do is to provide more value. And this, this, what you're looking at right here has not been fleshed out. This is just a, a vision for differentiation of, of uh, membership levels or potential membership levels. And this is taken or extracted from the new subcommittee website uh, that I have been um, picking at uh, in, my, uh, in my free time. The, um, the overarching idea behind this is we want to provide basically something for everyone. Um, we want to make it so that people who, you know, are just getting into the hobby and don't know if they want to, um, you know, make a large investment can invest $10 per year and still get value out of it. So on the new website, there is actually going to be a robust section that outlines events uh, vendors uh, and that kind of thing so that people will be able to have exclusive access to that with their membership. Um, up, over and above that, there will be the, you know, the, the secondary level, which will be, you know, an exceptionally reasonable, like, say, $39. And we haven't focused, we haven't, we haven't locked this down. So don't get too, you know, upset about the, the, the numbers. But there will be additional value. And that could be, um, you know, insurance at events. That could be a uh, subcommittee swag, which is something that we want to focus on. We really want to promote the pride of being an RC Submariner. And that could be, uh, you know, jackets and mugs and caps and vests and, and, you know, whatever it is that we end up coming up with at a, at a premium level. And then on the far end of the spectrum will be the people who are like, you know what, this is the coolest thing that I have ever done in the universe. And I'm going to make a long-term commitment to it. Um, you know, it could be say $140, but that's going to buy me 10 years, you know, of membership. And I'm going to get all the other things that everything gets. Uh, but I'm basically going to pre-buy all of that time because I feel that this is a worthwhile endeavor. So I just want everybody to understand that we are working, um, you know, tirelessly the, the, the main focus for the executive committee is what value are we bringing to the membership? Um, and, and $10 per year for the SCR, I think is completely valid, but we wanna bring more. And that could be membership to other organizations, you know, uh, that you could potentially find value with at the same time. So just 
you know, bear that in mind. Uh, I'll, again, I'm going to open this up. I think, Ed, you know, probably you in particular may have some comments on that, like, you know, the, uh, the IPMS or, or, or whatever that we were talking about the other night. Um, you know, what's, what, what could this potentially look like? And in, and in your mind, as a, you know, former subcommittee uh, member or existing subcommittee member, but only subcommittee member, what, what does that value look like to you? And, and what are people willing to pay for? <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> this said, um, uh, yeah, like, like I said, um, we, we, have to, we have to be more than um, what we have. We have done stagnant. I mean, you can walk away, you get the same group of people year after year, and they just be the form in the magazine. Okay. What part of the vision of, of growing it is, like I said, having these multiple levels. There, there's still people who just want to be a member of the subcommittee. But, you know, me as an RC member, okay, because the subcommittee is not just about radio control subcommittees. Uh, modeling in general, it's also about research, tax collecting, uh, anything and everything. It is not just the magazine, the submarine enthusiast, to be the source of the submarine enthusiast. Okay? So I'm, I'm saying we, we should have been uh, the de facto go to spot for anything related to submarine. Okay? So I mean, look. I'm going to be honest with you, because that's all I can do. You just like the forums, and you want to get the forums in, that's great. There are forums out there that you can just go do. Okay. But what about wanting insurance? You know, because I don't know about you, but, you know, not to drag the sign, but, you know, Murphy's Law is a clear and present danger in my life. And I wait for that five year old kid to touch my prop when it kicks off in a meet. Okay, or uh, a CO2, uh, uh, not a CO2, maybe Freon pipe to burst and have granny across the way get a heart attack from, from it or something to happen. I, I know, it's just it's my luck. So insurance is important to me. Uh, if we partner up with the SSMA and maybe get a good deal on membership prices when you join the subcommittee, you become an automatic member also in the SSMA. So that's what happens if you get by state model managers. And you're covered by insurance for this, okay? Um, and then maybe partnering with the um, plastic models. You got to bring the plastic model into it. It's more than just our okay? But the research goes to that. So that's that's kind of. And then we have that golden level where where you 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 know somebody like me takes all that discretionary spending and buys holes from Bob. You know, I'm going to be here for a long, long time. I got models. For 30 years old, I would love to take, get a good value on the thing. So I think this is a great idea. I think it's part of what we need to do. It's going to offer added value. What do you want to join the subcommittee other than speak and for? Yep. So at the end of the day, it's, it, the, the, the overarching idea is how do we provide value for everybody, regardless of, of what your, your interest level is. You've got people who are like, man, I don't know. This sounds really cool, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if I want to jump in with both feet. So, hey, 10 bucks a month, I can get access to the events and, and you know, uh, you know pre-vetted vendor section and that kind of thing. That's worth it, right? Um, and then there's that next level up. It's like, not only do I want access to that, but I want to be part of this community. I want, I want to feel camaraderie. I want to feel like I'm part of this group. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to support it through, you know, such a small additional investment in, in money, but I'm going to get, you know, some stuff back that's going to make it worthwhile for me to do. And then again, at the far side of the spectrum, uh, is the people like, I think this is a worthwhile endeavor. I've been doing this for like forever, or I'm super passionate about it. And I'm just going to make the investment because I know I'm going to be in this for at least the next decade. Um, so that's what we're after. We want to be able to provide value to each one of these groups. And we are, as the executive committee, going to define exactly what that looks like. 
and make it very uh, clear to people uh, so that they can make a determination about what level of investment they want to make. And the really cool thing, and this is a great you know, segue into the next part of, uh, of the discussion. Let me, uh, let me jump over here, here we go. Is uh, the web asset updates. And so, you know, obviously in today's day and age, um, you know, an online presence is not only, um, you know, necessary, but it's expected of any sort of an organization. Uh, the subcommittee is not local, it is global. We have always taken that perspective. We are a worldwide organization and the uh, worldwide interweb is a perfect platform for us to, uh, you know, reach out and touch people all over the globe. Um, so there's two primary web assets that we have, and both of them are uh, seeing a lot of investment uh, on behalf of the subcommittee and the executive team, time, energy, and resources. The forums uh, are obviously one of the bigger ones. You know, this is the area for people all over the world to uh, have visibility to what other people all over the world are doing, how they are doing it, new products, new events, all sorts of wonderful things like that. Our uh, forums are unfortunately, uh, like I'm trying to remember here, like five versions out of date or something ridiculous like that. So we have, we have contacted uh, or contracted with uh, an individual who is working through the very intricate uh, procedures for upgrading our forums to the most current uh, version, which is going to allow the most functionality for the forums, the you know, easiest way for people to submit information, view information, uh, and search for information. The yeah, website, oh, what so was that? Are we going to delete inactive, uh, like vendor page, uh, or archive, not delete, but archive Big Dave's page. You know, that's not going to be updated. Yes. So uh, actually, uh, you know, again, steering back to, to uh, Ed there. So he has proposed and the executive committee has uh, accepted uh, a, a, a proposed reorganization of the forums that will simplify things. If you go onto the forums right now, you literally need to scroll down for like half an hour. All of the different, you know, forums and sub forums and threads and, you know, all of this kind of thing. So we are going to simplify that exponentially. It's going to be so much more intuitive for people to jump in and find information. That is all going to be part and parcel of the upgrade. The, the primary thing that we're working through right now is the actual engine that's driving the soft, you know, the, the, the platform. Yeah. We need to get that up updated so that uh, it's safe and it's easy for people to use. And so that's what we're doing right now. After that, it's in our hands. We have the ability to jump in and, and move and merge and delete and add and subtract and, and whatever we want to do. So 100%. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Um, Oh, and I just I have a quick point to that. Very quick point. Yes. Uh, Rick and anybody else watching this, just so you don't get too nervous, it's not going to be anything you're unfamiliar with. It's actually going to mimic the subcommittee report itself. If you know what the Fox schedule is, and you know what the exchange is, and you know what smoke on the horizon is, you're going to easily be able to navigate that. We're making it look like the report. Okay. Maybe we can add a in memoriam page for past fallen members. It's a great idea. Yep, great idea. Um, so to be forgotten, that's all. Abso absolutely. Absolutely. The eternal patrol. The eternal patrol. The eternal there you patrol. go. Okay. Um, the new website. So this is something that, that I have uh, elected foolishly to take upon my shoulders um, only because I have experience, uh, you know, in creation of the knowledge dry docs uh, in, in utilizing this free software so that the, the cost to the subcommittee is going to be exceptionally 
low. I promise the bill won't be anything more than like a million dollars. It'll be, it'll be completely fine. Um, but the, the, the new site is currently under uh, construction. The executive committee's had some visibility to it. I'm gonna work on it a little bit more and probably during the next live executive committee update, I'm gonna give a, a sneak preview of the new website, but uh, basically it's going to be modernized. Um, the big thing there is, is that it's gonna be the central hub for subcommittee members to control their experience with the subcommittee. So you'll be able to manage your membership. You'll be able to renew your membership. You'll be able to see how much time is left on your membership. Um, and then over and above all of that, uh, you'll have all of obviously the, um, the general things that, that most people will. So, uh, you know, general information about the subcommittee and access to the forums. Um, in this list that, again, hopefully you can see right now in that presentation, anything in bold is only accessible to members. So events list, you know, upcoming events, that's reserved for people who pay $10 a month at minimum. Uh, the vendor list, you know, who is currently out there that we feel comfortable, uh, you know, affiliating with as, a, as the subcommittee, as a, as a vendor that we would be willing to put our name behind. Um, the local subskipper database, this is huge. So just to, to back this up a little bit more, this is the implementation of this was not simple. Um, and I, I piloted this on the Nautilus dry dock. So the cool news is all of this is, is now engineered and will be implemented in the new website. So the idea behind it is you will have the opportunity to uh, submit your name to um, basically be a, a, uh, a, a, a point of contact, a point of contact for local people. Um, and that will uh, allow them to reach out to you and it will allow, um, you to reach out to them. Um, the, the reason that it, it became somewhat problematic is we needed to, to lock that database behind, uh, you know, a wall of some kinds. And we, and we do that through membership. So in order to access it, you need to be a member of the subcommittee. Um, anybody can register, you know, hey, please, you know, if anybody's looking for information or wants to reach out, they can reach me. But in order for you to reach out to other people and have visibility to that list, you need to be a member. So that's like, the, yep. Sounds like an AT&T commercial. <laughs> okay. Reach All out right. and touch somebody. Reach out and touch somebody. Exactly. So I'm, wow. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty excited about that. Bob, uh, yep. just a quick question. Uh, just to give it, people uh, an idea, because I've been asked uh, by this, uh, by the Carmel group, put together this. They need the um, they they need the uh, forums for uh, certain things for setting up karma like the future design and, and whatnot. So they want to know uh, when is the new. Can you give us an approximate earliest date that the new website and forum can be up and running? It would definitely be past karma. <laughs> yeah. So. <clears throat> you know, this, this obviously is, is just time, right, to, to get it implemented. The good news is, um, because I am going in for surgery uh, coming up here, I'm going to literally have nothing to do but sit in a room and poke around on my computer for like a month. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to be able to get up. I can't go to the shop. I can't do anything like that. So my, my focus area um, this is, this is one of the major things It's going to be the website. So in theory, I would say, um, you know, by the end of my, my self-imposed exile to let my, uh, abdomen, uh, perforations heal up, uh, it should be the end of July. So I'm thinking, uh, early August ish, we should be at the point where the new website should be able to be, uh, at least visible to people so that they would have the opportunity to start supplying feedback to us uh, and all of that, uh, that sort of fun stuff. So why don't we say this? So it'll be visible early August, but it won't go live until 
post Carmel Day. About yeah. that. That, that, way, that sounds that can, sounds that sounds fair. Yep. They can do their business as usual, and then next year they'll be able to uh, do what they got to do on the new. So, to you gentlemen um, running uh, Carmel, uh, great job as always, and don't worry about it until after your event. Right. Yeah, that sounds that sounds totally fair. You bet. So um, part and parcel of that, um, you know, a little bit further more. So anybody will be able to sign up for the subcommittee newsletter. Uh, and I think that's probably fair whether you're a member or not. So if people want to understand what the subcommittee is doing, what we're focusing on, things that are coming up, things that the subcommittee wants to push out to the RC submarine community as a whole, people will be able to sign up for that. Um, and the cool thing about that, Mr. Membership Chairman, is these are all, every single one of them, prime membership opportunities for us to potentially leverage. You know, if they signed up for the, for the newsletter, it means they have an interest in RC submarines. And if they're not a member, that is, that is a prime target for us to, uh, to reach out and, and uh, solicit $10, $10 a year. I, st I have to laugh, $10 a year. Okay. Uh, the other thing I thought that was that was really cool about this, and we talked about this um, at uh, at our last uh, internal executive committee um, meeting, was this idea that uh, people who signed up would would automatically be notified of upcoming events in their local area, and we will now have the capabilities of sorting out our membership by geographical location and sending out an email not notification to them that, hey, just letting you know, you know, uh, we have an event coming up uh, two months from now at this, that, and the other place at, at uh, this approximate time, um, you might want to consider attending. So I, I think it's great for people who don't, you know, peruse the forums in depth on a regular basis. It's a more of a push versus them having to reach out and, and solicit that information. So that's really, that, to me, that feels really, really exciting. All right, moving forward. And we got eight minutes. We have eight minutes left. Um, Subron. So this, uh, as I mentioned before, this has been like the baby for Ed. Uh, he's reached out to basically every one of our respective uh, sub RON, sub comms, and over the course of the years, the terminologies all got befuddled, um, but basically the local groups, and said, hey, how are things going in your local area? What are you doing, and what can we do as a group to support your efforts? So, Ed, in, uh, in, in three words or less, what did... <laughs> It, it can be more than three words. What what was the uh, the summary of your efforts? Well, I, I've had uh, I've had response from each and every um, chapter, uh, positive, and uh, I think we're going to enter a phase in uh, a phase in where we start um, really seeing where they need help and how we can help them and how we can bring it all together because the chapter that really is the, the, for most people grassroots, you know, that, that's where the members are. And so the, the vision of, um, you know, promoting more interoperability between us. So, so for example, that they, you know, just get some guy out there with a cell phone and video something, send it to me, I'll throw the logo on it to the local chapter and send it. I'm trying to get those liaisons to work with me on that. And, you know, I can do the behind the scenes work to get it up. So really that's where we're at now, getting uh, the liaisons, uh, whatever you want to call them, Commodore, uh, you know, type of Commodore, chapter, I prefer chapter commander. We're not a yacht club, so we don't, we don't have Commodores. Uh, the chapter commander who interfaces with me, and I'm acting sort of as, as the chief of staff for them, for you and, and the, the rest of the executive committee and pull it together and have the communication that we so desperately need. Yeah. So to, to 
you know, so to let everybody know what our strategy is, and, and you may have glimpsed it when I was sharing there a moment ago, 2021, honestly, this, this is us getting our feet underneath us, you know, understanding where we're at, what we need to do, you know, who are the players, what are the things that we need to do to support them. Uh, next year, 2022, which will be the second year of our three of our three year mission, uh, is going to be to to begin extending that support um, uh, and and guidance for those local subrons. So many of them, you know, to Ed's point, have been doing the same thing at the same place with the same people over and over and over again. There are best practices that we are going to be able to pass along to them that are going to help all of these local groups uh, become far more effective, uh, more exciting. They're going to be able to attract more members. Um, and we want to be able to pass these resources along to them. Now, part and parcel of all of this, and I need everybody to understand that, is if you are going to represent yourself as a chapter of the subcommittee, you have uh, not only does the subcommittee have obligation to you, but you have obligation to the subcommittee. We have, uh, are going to have certain um, minimum requirements of each one of these subruns. If you're going to be a subrun of the subcommittee, there's certain things that you're going to need to do you need to represent subcommittee to our levels. And uh, uh, in it, but we're not talking like massive things here. We're just saying like advertise yourself as the subcommittee, have subcommittee resources available, answer questions for people about the subcommittee. You know, there's things that we can do to promote the hobby and the organization as a whole at every single um, you know, event that you have. There's other people that are going to be around, be it a, you know, mom, dad, and, and the and the 12 year old kid. That those are the people that we're trying to rope into the group, and we want to make sure that we have the resources available that we can answer the questions uh, that they may have. Give them, uh, you know, the the contact points for for information so that they can move forward in their remote controlled submarine or static submarine or memorabilia collection uh, you know, endeavors. So just bear that in mind. Right now we're, we're quietly listening. We're, we're soliciting information. We're finding out where we're at. And next year is gonna be very much like, okay, we've listened and this is what we have determined. This is what we need to do to grow the organization. This is what you need to do to grow as a sub run. And, and maybe that means we're going to have to take a hard line. There, there may be groups that are like, you know what? We just it's a bunch of people. And we want to get together and run submarines. You know, we don't want to have all of this like fluff around the outside. That's fine. But you're not going to do it under the subcommittee banner. Right. Uh, we, we need to have a certain degree of control over that. And uh, unfortunately, that, that could potentially be the, the path that it follows. Just bear that in, in, in mind. Nothing's happened right yet um but as an organization we have an obligation to our membership and uh an obligation to the hobby to grow it and uh, we need everybody on board so that is where we're at right now um events coming up in 2021 this is like sh advertising for everyone you can change the channel if you want to um carmel is coming up uh in august we've got the san francisco uh, run coming up in August. We have Groton coming up in September and we have Subfest coming up in September. Those events should in theory be uh, or will obviously be in the events calendar uh, at the, uh, on the new website when that gets launched. They're certainly on the forums um, uh, at the subcommittee. And uh, they are also on the events calendar at the Nullis Dry Docks. So if you guys have uh, any intentions of attending events, it is going to be a very busy fall. August and September are going to be super busy. It's like the only time apparently that we're going to be running any events. I don't, we're, we're, we're going to have to get more intentional about scheduling uh, events and scattering them uh, in a more... Uh, even manner throughout the course of the year. So people don't need to decide which one they need to go to. They can come to all of them. That'd be awesome. 
Okay. Keeping going here. We're only 10 minutes behind the time. We're, we're doing okay. Um, a really quick brief here. We, we move on to uh, social networking opportunities. And uh, Ed brought this one to, to life. There's this channel, and I am absolutely and completely addicted to it now. This guy, Aaron, from Subbrief. It's like every submarine you could ever think of. And he goes into like a 45 minute presentation on the background of the boat and like where it was built and how it was built and what its mission profile is and how it was put together and where it's at now and where it's going to be. It's pretty epic stuff. And uh, I've opened up a dialogue uh, with Aaron and uh, it sounds promising that perhaps we're going to have some cross promotional opportunities uh he's got somewhere in the vicinity like eighty-two thousand subscribers some somewhere in that neighborhood um i know the um the rc sub guy channel has something in the, the neighborhood of like 30 some odd thousand subscribers so that you know there's this opportunity for for cross promotion between these two platforms um it could be super exciting I think obviously there's there's a uh, you know a lot of of uh, you know parallel interest. I, I have to think that people who are interested in submarines may be interested in having a scale model of a submarine, or building a static model of a submarine, or building a functional model of a submarine, and that is where we come into play. And then on the flip side of things, anybody building a model of a submarine has to be like, man, I would love to know the background and history of this boat. And, uh, you know, this guy can give me the information. So um, I'm super excited. Uh, Ed, thanks for ferreting out this opportunity and passing along the information. Uh, hopefully something will happen. Uh, Aaron's up in Michigan. Um, but I think with uh, today's day and age of, you know, Zoom meetings, we'll be able to do a really cool you know, uh, a, a group meeting where we can just do, uh, you know, bats and information back and forth about who we are, what we're doing and what the opportunities are. So pretty awesome stuff. And that brings yeah. us, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, it, you know, the level of research that this that Aaron does and his sources, you know, if we had this in the 90s, you know, it's just unheard of. If you're a subcommittee member and you're looking for research material and data on, on submarines, it's incredible what this individual can offer us. I'm just expanding on that with Bob, what he said. That is the key. You know, if we are about learning about our subject matter, this is the key. Totally, I totally agree. And the thing that I love about this is this information is applicable not only for RC, you know, skippers, but for static modelers, for historians, for memorabilia collectors, for, you know, anybody that has an interest in that particular uh, hobby. I think there's a, a massive amount of, um, you know, cross interest uh, opportunity there for, for anybody. I'm I, I have to allocate, you know, five or 10 minutes a day because that's all I have right now. I'll probably have a lot more when I'm sitting on the couch, you know, drugged up on uh, hydrocortone or, or whatever it is they're giving me to watch more videos. But I watched the one on the typhoon. It was like 50 minutes long. Super fascinating. <laughs> all the way back to like the, the Russian guy that, that spearheaded the whole endeavor. It was, it was awesome, awesome stuff. I'm super excited. All right, that brings us to question and answer period for the uh, two, no, three individuals that decided to join us here live uh, today. Um, obviously, there's lots of things going on. These are the topics we elected to focus on here, but now's your opportunity to pick our brains as the uh, representative of, of the executive uh, committee of the subcommittee. Speechless. We're doing, we're that awesome. That is so awesome, Rick. Thank you very much. We're going to end it there. Thank you much, everybody. So what do you think, think of it? What? what? Overall, what, what's your opinion, Rick? Are we going in the right direction? Um, 
be there anywhere we can see her. By the way, I do want to point out one other thing. Each and every, and I know Bob said it, but I just want to make sure everybody understands the stuff that each and every son can remember. It is theirs to steal. We're just, we're just running them. We're the grease, we're the oil in the engine. That's what we're doing. No, we're going to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Some things may work, some things we may not try, but everybody's going to have a voice. Your voice truly matters. I was taught there's no such thing as a stupid question. Well, there's no such thing as a stupid idea to try. You know, we just try it, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, boom, like Elon Musk in SpaceX, boom, 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 let's do it. Mm hmm. No, nope. no, it sounds like you're going a decent direction. It's been stagnant. It hasn't changed in so many years. I mean, we have to do something. Memberships, what is it now? 450? 400? Who knows? I remember 1100. Three, three something. Three something. Three something. Hmm. Well, so things are going to change or it's going to die a slow and painful death. And it's all the strength of the people involved and the members. And if people don't want to attend meetings or they don't want to pony up money, it's just going to wither away and die. Simple as that. I think I think it's the the general consensus of this particular executive committee. If this if this group uh, is going to wither away and die, it's not going to be on our watch, and it's not going to be for lack of of trying. No, no. But it takes in involvement and participation on everybody's part. Instead of just going, yeah, I scanned the web page. Uh, I looked sub swap. Nope, Bob beat me out of another hall again. So <laughs> <laughs> have to get up at four thirty and scan the pages. <laughs> I know it's it, this is less than one, but you know what? The way I feel about the subcommittee, my subcommittee, is we at this point in history could have been the one with ninety. 100,000 followers mm. on our YouTube channel. We should be the one people are coming to get information on everything submarine, the source for the submarine information. Mm -hmm. that, that should have been 10 years ago. Think of, think, we do it. Think, think about the people that we have in our organization, and I've had the opportunity to, to network with them. You know, who these people are. The, the things that they've done, uh, you know, in, in, in history, like it, it absolutely baffles me that I've had the opportunity to communicate with these individuals. And we've got this re these resources sitting there, you know, in the, in the wings, just kind of waiting to be plucked out and, and leveraged to grow the group. So it's, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a ton of work, but uh, I, I'm pretty confident that we've got the right people in place um, to make it happen. I'm still here, and I've been a member for a long time. Glad to see it. Yeah. Moving on. All right. Well, um, with that and uh we got ed and we got fung on the line there if you guys have any comments by all means now's your chance to speak up but if not uh if you're cool and you think we're doing an amazing job and we all deserve raises then just stay silent and uh we can sign off uh right now and we'll post this video up and everybody can make uh comments on the forums nice Oh, that's Ed T. Oh, now I know who Ed T is. Oh, he only turns his video on at the last second. Okay, all right, I understand. I would have disowned him if he didn't show up. Okay, all right, good stuff, good stuff. All right, yeah, guys. I guess I was, I was put out there, like, you know, because we're going to post this, right? We're going to post this recording so that other members can see it. So, I mean, for everybody who's here and then for anyone who watches it, like, I think there's a really good opportunity for the membership to try to promote uh, even just from your chair, from your computer, right? You know, uh, if you're already subscribed, great. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so you can see all the videos and then just play the videos. Just add some views to the videos. You can put your YouTube on autoplay and just let it play in the background. 
I know the regatta videos, while they're awesome, they are two hours long. That's a long time to just sit there and watch it. But you can just let it play in the background, uh, increase the view number on it, which will assist with the algorithm and put it out our name to other people who just randomly look for RC sub and then there's subcommittee. So uh, everybody in the membership can do their part and we can all just try to populate that algorithm on YouTube and Instagram. There's a really easy way to easily armchair our way towards putting our name out. Yeah, and, and, and your link. For, for, for a little bit further to that, I would just say, you know, obviously our goal is, is to not just get everybody to play them through for the sake of playing through them, but we want to be able to create content that people not only will, will suffer through, but are, are desperate to watch through. That, that is the ultimate goal, I think, at the end of the, of the day. And like, who, who's not, who could not be excited about this? It's like, it's the coolest stuff ever. All right, good stuff. With that, we are going to terminate this particular meeting. And my mouse died. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. But uh, we're going to sign off and uh, let everybody get back to their Saturday night. Um, thank you for those of us, or those of us, yeah, those of us who joined in today. And uh, for those of you that did not have an opportunity to sign in live, please, please, please uh, reach out either through the forums or direct uh, via those emails that I uh, pointed out a little bit earlier. We want uh, and need your feedback in order to make this a super awesome organization. So thanks a lot, everyone. Have an Thank awesome you. night. And we'll talk, we will talk to you guys all later. I think they hear you.